What makes us humans the superior species? It's our brains, one of the most complex organs of the human body, providing us with the ability to walk and talk besides the various other tasks that we can perform all this is the product of millions of years of evolution. Our brains have undergone remarkable changes over time developing in both size and sophistication. The average brain size of a modern human is about 1350 cubic centimeters. In this video, we will see how our brain size has changed with time but keep in mind that bigger is not always better. Size is not the only solution to the puzzle. Studies have shown that there is no particularly strong relationship between brain size and intelligence in humans. Brain size of all human species are not known due to limited resources of cranial fossils and the brain size is calculated according to the cranial capacity. So with that said, let us begin. Starting with the first in the line of evolution before the existence of humans is Sahil Anthropus chadensis. With their ape-like features, the brain size of this species is only 350 cubic centimeters, which is similar to the brain size of a modern-day chimp. Next, we have the members of the Ardipids. Ardipithecus gadaba and Ardipithecus ramidus had brain size measuring between 300 to 350 cubic centimeters. With facial structures similar to that of apes, even their brain size was similar to the same. The foramen magnum, which is a large hole at the base of the skull, is located under the brain case just as in bipeds rather than a four-legged ape. Moving to the Australopithecines, Australopithecus anamensis had a brain size of around 370 cubic centimeters and this is where the brain size starts showing a variation as we move forward along the line of evolution with Australopithecus afarensis having a brain with a size of 446 cubic centimeters on average. Now, lack of cranial remains makes estimates difficult, but the similarities in jaw and teeth features to other Australopithecines suggest the brain sizes of Australopithecus prometheus and Australopithecus barilgazali would be in the same size range, which is 400 to 550 cubic centimeters, as other species in this genus. Coming to Kinianthropus platyops, a relatively complete but crushed cranium exhibits a relatively small cranial capacity of 450 cubic centimeters. Up next is the southern ape of Africa, Australopithecus africanus, with a brain size of about 460 cubic centimeters. Paranthropus ethiopicus had a brain size of only about 410 cubic centimeters, while Australopithecus garhi's brain size was about 450 cubic centimeters. Before we move on to the more recent species, it is important to know that at this point our ancestors had already started making and using simple stone tools, which means our brains had already come a long way since the beginning of evolution. After Australopithecus garhi, next in the timeline was Homo habilis with a brain size of 612 cubic centimeters on average. This species was known to be smarter than the others that came before, knowing how to tackle even carnivorous competitors for food. Existing the same time as H. H. habilis was Paranthropus boisei with a brain size of approximately 530 cubic centimeters and right after came Australopithecus sediba with a size of 440 cubic centimeters and Paranthropus robustus with 530 cubic centimeters. As you've seen, brain size fluctuated according to the genus, with the genus Paranthropus having larger brains than the individuals of Ardipithecus and Australopithecus. Now, we are getting closer to the modern humans. Let us see how brain size varies amongst the different species of the humans. Homo rudolfensis was originally thought to be Homo habilis until it came to the size of the brain in which they found that it had an incredibly larger one in comparison to H. habilis with a size of approximately 775 cubic centimeters. The brain size of Homo georgicus was found to be half as large as that of modern humans which was about 600 cubic centimeters. 
It has been suggested that H. jojicus may represent a link between Homo habilis and Homo erectus, which brings us to the famous species that first tamed fire. With such a big achievement, Homo erectus's brain size was about approximately 1000 cubic centimeters and that is huge. The brain size of certain Homo erectus individuals even exceeded many modern humans of normal intelligence. Fun fact, the brain of the Nobel Prize winning novelist Anatole France had a volume of only 1000 cubic centimeters. Existing at the same time was Homo ergaster, who also had a large brain with a size ranging from 850 to 1200 cubic centimeters, and existing a few million years after was Homo antecessor with an approximate brain size of 1000 cubic centimeters. Homo heidelbergensis individuals were pretty tall and were also known to use tools that are similar, although more specific than those used by Homo erectus. Their brain size was almost 1270 cubic centimeters, which is around 93% of that of modern humans, which made scientists wonder if they had the ability to communicate through speech. Homo rodensiensis, or the Rhodesian man's brain size, was calculated to be approximately 1100 cubic centimeters, and that of Homo naledi was around 600 cubic centimeters only. Scientists say the brains of Naledi may be small but it's packed with a big punch as it is a lot like ours. The famous Homo neanderthalensis or the Neanderthals had a brain size of 1500 cubic centimeters which is 11% larger than that of the modern humans. But even with large size, evidence suggests that the Neanderthal's brain may not have been wired to support effective communication and diplomatic skills. Homo floresiensis, however, was the total opposite with a brain size of only around 400 cubic centimeters. Because of this, there has been a great deal of controversy over whether Homo floresiensis actually is a distinct form of human. But individuals of this species were pretty small which may be the reason behind their small brains. The most recent species to have existed was Homo luzonensis. The brain size of the individuals of this species was the most similar to us with a size of about 1327 cubic centimeters. And 300,000 years ago, we finally came into existence with a brain size of about 1350 cubic centimeters. The skulls of modern humans are not only larger than those of our earlier ancestors but are also different in shape. So, from primitive small brains of only 350 cubic centimeters, our brains have come a long way to 1350 cubic centimeters with about 100 billion neurons, more than 100,000 kilometers of interconnections and an estimated storage capacity of 2.5 petabytes or a million gigabytes. Now that is pretty impressive. Our different regions of the brain have become specialized with distinctive structures and functions. For example, the cerebellum is involved in movement and coordination, whereas the cerebral cortex is involved in memory, language and consciousness, and thanks to our language skills, we can convey information rapidly and efficiently to other members of our species. So that's all about the evolution of our brain size. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and for more videos on human species, do check out our channel as we have made many just for you. Also, do not forget to support us by liking our videos and subscribing to our channel. And for opinions and suggestions, drop in a comment in the comment section down below.